I'm sailing Catalpa. We dive our little hearts out on a beautiful reef in Wakatobi and head to another atoll after we decide not to anchor where we planned. We arrived at Karangkoro Maho at about 5 p.m. in the afternoon, right on high tide, and followed our navionics where it showed the entrance into the lagoon, dropped the anchor and prepared to leave at high tide the next morning. The next morning, we woke an hour after the high, pulled the anchor and headed out the way we came in. I was up the front and told Lee it looked too shallow, so I think maybe you should head down a little further. It looked deeper down there. Later that morning, after we anchored again in the same lagoon, a fisherman came over for a chat. Yeah, you heard right, we're anchored back in the same lagoon. We didn't leave, we actually hit the reef. <laughs> Uh -huh. Umur 13. Yeah, 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kalau yang besar, umur 20. 20, 20. tahun. Ah, 20. Ah. Yeah. 20 yeah. tahun ke atas. Yeah. <laughs> Apa eh, ini? Nangka. 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 Yeah. Nangka. Bagus. <laughs> it was a local fruit that had soft flesh. It tasted like a mixture of maybe pineapple and custard apple. This morning we, um, we were going to leave this atoll and we decided to. It was after high tide, so the tide had already turned and started going out. So number one, wasn't very smart. <clears throat> we got up too late. And then we were going along and uh, Lee was going to follow the line out that we came in on and I, from what it looked like, it looked deeper down further so I said to keep going down further, stupidly. And um, so we went out on a different line of what we came. Ended up being too shallow and we've actually hit the reef. So we managed to not get stuck, thank God. Um, because it was an outgoing tide and we've come back into the lagoon and anchored back up. So we had a shit ass morning. Haven't checked underneath the boat yet to see damage, but we just had this guy, um, Aru, I think his name, Aru. He came over to check us out and he was really lovely. He was just the nicest guy and just changed our, our mood around this morning so much. And, um, he was just really lovely and so happy and he didn't have much and he came over and he was willing to share his food. He gave us... Well, he's given us... what's this called? I can't remember. I can't remember the name of it. Kaswami. Ada Kaswami. Ada Kaswami. Like a rice. It's almost like a rice it's bread. like real it's stodgy. Really, that's like, really like heavy. a kilo. So yeah. it's, and then these are like little miniature donuts. These are like Taj's favourite. Makes. So his daughter made them and then he just gave them to us and he was so lovely. We gave him a coffee and it was he didn't want to come board, he was happy to sit on his boat and um We had a couple of old hand or new hand spears because we've got um spear guns that we use and we gave him a hand spear and he was just over the moon and he tried to give us his spear gun but I just didn't want to take that off him. No. As much as I wanted it, it was a cool looking Indo homemade little spear gun. He's from the island that we, we were trying to get to this morning. It'd be nice to get over there and get some internet, that's where we were heading today but fate has it that we're, we're here and we're, we can't leave this lagoon until high tide. So we'll be here today and we'll leave either, yeah, probably tomorrow morning. So I'm going to go under and have a look at the boat. Oh, fingers crossed there's no damage, but we did hit the reef, so, you know, we're hoping that there isn't any damage. He's got more snacks than us. This guy eats more food than we do. We're worried about taking his food, and he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> he's got three daughters, so they look after him. <laughs> Make sure Dad's fed while he's fishing. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to jump in. Sarah's going to inspect. Wish me luck. Hopefully it's just a scratch. I'm nervous. I don't want to look. You gotta do it. Alright. Mm -hmm. 
Is there damage to us? If there yeah. is, we have to go and slip the boat, which is really suck because we have no idea where we would do that. Uh oh. <gasps> She's tricking me. <laughs> She's I could tell the poker baby. face. I could tell the poker face. <laughs> I've seen um, that but before. We have to move that way. There's only about that much under the back. Okay, so. No damage, just a few scratches on the bottom of the keel. Thank goodness for that. We aren't going anywhere, so let's make the most of being here. Later that afternoon, our friend was back to show us his catch for the day. What have we got there, Sarah? We've got some beautiful fish that our friend has caught. <laughs> some coral trout in there. Yeah. And some cod. Oh, guys. Very good. Great way to keep them alive. Cooking uh, in the tropics, as you can see, it's a bit Sweatin'. of a hot task. Sweating. Good to see Sarah sweat a little bit. That's what I look like in the engine bay. Get back in the kitchen, you. Well, you want to show them what I'm cooking? Some curry. Ooh. Fish curry. Fish yum, curry. Yum, yum. We've got some fish here. And our friend. Tauru, Tauru, I think his name was, I can't remember. Um, fisherman out here with that we met and he dropped over a little trowelly for us, so we'll cook that up as well. Cheers. Look at that. That is... Fish curry. That is good. That is fish curry. Oh Buckles. yeah. So we left the reef that we were anchored in this morning at about 4 a.m. So it was dark. <laughs> there was storms around us, so there was lightning everywhere. Um, and we were kind of stuck inside a lagoon. We tried to leave yesterday, but tide was too low. Um, when we came in, that was we had about three meters of water. And yesterday when we tried to leave, we actually hit the reef. But we didn't get stuck and we didn't do any damage. We've just scraped the bottom of the boat. Thank God she's solid as a rock. <laughs> yeah, but we got out this morning and easy peasy, a little bit stressful, but. Easy peasy, oh, a little bit nerve wracking, but um, we had no option because the tides are getting less and less in the morning, so, and bigger of a night. So we had to either get out this morning or be stuck there 
We didn't want to leave at night. Like we could have left yesterday late afternoon, but then our next anchorage is, you know, two three hours away. So that wouldn't have been smart either. No. About 2.1, and we draw two. So we just rubbed the bottom yesterday. Um, but yeah, this morning we had a meter under the keel, so we were good. Meter under most of the way. The bombies were. Yeah, it's two and a half. Four, 2.6. Yeah, but I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we're at. And I had two charts. The uh, Navionics shows one entrance, and the open CPN actually shows an entrance at the completely opposite side of the lagoon, or completely different spot of the lagoon. So I, I didn't fly the drone enough to see which was actually true. So we should have. There thought, is definitely we... a discrepancy between the two charts. Um, yeah, and the entrance isn't really an entrance. There's no, it's not like a deep water entrance. It's really, I wouldn't call it an entrance. And unless you have to, I wouldn't recommend anchoring there. No. <laughs> we had a nice time. Very hard anchoring but. anywhere here at the moment. It's either shallow reef or a kilometre down and nothing in between. For that lagoon was uh, an island. Um, but it was too deep, like it went from, how deep was it around the island? About two metres. So no, I mean, how deep was it? A kilometre? Yeah. It was like massive drop-offs. Big walls. Awesome so, diving. Yeah, we were spewing because we really wanted to stop. It looked like there was no one on the island and it was a really cool looking island, but um, yeah, unfortunately we, we couldn't stop there. The captain made the decision that it wouldn't have been a smart move. Stay at the island, but... <laughs> No, at the end of the day, it's his call and I'm okay with that. I might have a little hissy fit every now and then, but it yeah, is. It's probably the nicest island we've seen in Indonesia so far and we couldn't stop. It was the most, yeah, it was. Just saying, just saying quietly, it was the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. And we didn't stop. Full of coconut trees. So today we're heading to Palau Tomia. Really need some food, so we'll go get some food hopefully and do some dives around there. Apparently there's good diving. Tomia was about 20 nautical miles away and we arrived just before lunch and was in search for an anchorage. After deciding where was best, we dropped anchor in 20 metres of water outside a beautiful little fishing town called Usuku. After making sure Katalpa was anchored properly, we went ashore in search for some internet, food and fuel. We were welcomed by some really nice locals, reassuring our tender would be safe. I'm on, I'm on. And walked in to find helpful, happy people in this colourful little town that quickly became one of our favourite stops. then back out to Catalpa. We had had no internet for the last 10 days and I was online checking out the reefs around us when I saw the track from our reef on the previous stop. The app I was using is Overtel and it's like Google Images, but you can only upload when you have internet. We didn't have any internet when we were planning on anchoring here and what I saw when it uploaded was disturbing. When we entered the atoll, what we thought was the entrance was not. We went straight over the reef. We were so, so lucky. This could have gone so horribly wrong. And we learned a massive lesson that day. Triple check where you're going and have two backup plans. And make sure you passage plan to the best of your ability, especially if you're traveling to Indonesia. The charts over here have been completely out. This is a mistake that we will definitely not be making again. All right, so guys, we stuffed up. 
We uh, nearly ended up high and dry on the reef. We had a little bit too much faith in Navionics coming into an atoll and not only just being Navionics, um, we also have uh, OpenCPN as another backup. It was out, Navionics was out. Um, we didn't have satellite imagery for this location as we didn't think we'd actually be going to this little reef. So any pointers on overlaying imagery onto our charts would be much appreciated. I have found a little blog which I think anyone um, interested in electronic charting and how it all works and how things are out and whatnot, this little blog's great. Uh, from Soggy Paws so you don't actually end up on the reef like these guys um, that were all reliant on electronic navigation. I won't go into it but I'll put the link down below so you can have a read and let us know your thoughts on that and any pointers on um, overlaying satellite imagery Onto our charts would be much appreciated. Thanks. See you next time. Next time on Sailing Catalpa. Lee's back at it, pulling apart things. We buy something we have no idea how to cook off this guy. And we meet our friend Ita. Cheers, everyone. And have a beautiful day. Oh, it all comes all thanks to you all. Thanks to y'all